My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the ATI T Study Manual, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. In the event that you decide that you want to have some more practice solving these problems for T's, you will find that we have solved every single problem that appeared in the previous edition, the fifth edition that I'm holding in my hand. You will find the solutions to all the problems from the fifth edition from day number 1 to 80. T is 5, day 1 to 80. There are no videos from 81 through 100. We begin a new series with 101 for the sixth edition. Today is our lesson number 145. We are on page number 91 and we're going to do problem number 3 that you see there. Problem number 3. It says, determine, determine whether each statement is true or false. It is our job to establish, after having read the statement, to establish the veracity of it. The veracity of it, whether it is true or false. Veracity is a noun, it simply means truthfulness. It is our job, after having read the statement, to establish whether the statement is true or false, whether it is based on some, some truth or no. Veracity. Day number 38. If you're interested, if you're interested in improving your vocabulary, just type in vocabulary, just search, just type in vocabulary words, day 38, that's all you have to put in there. If it doesn't show up, if it doesn't pop up, type in my name along with it, type in vocabulary words, day 38, and then Keshwani. Even without Keshwani, it should pop right up. Watch the video and learn that word and some other words, if you're interested in improving your vocabulary, that is. And I see no reason why you shouldn't be. Do you understand? Statement A says, every, every scatter plot, every scatter plot is an example of covariance. Every scatter plot, every scatter plot is an example, every scatter plot is an example of covariance. Let's find out, shall we? Covariance simply means they vary together. Here's our, here's our two, two axes, x-axis and y-axis. And let's put some numbers here. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. 25, 50, and 75. These values that we're going to just put here is what we did yesterday. Is what we did yesterday on day number 144 where we plotted the relationship between the radius and the area. So here we have the radius, which is the indefinite variable here. Here is the area. We're going to do that in a second. This is 25, 50, and 75. We're not going to redo all the work. I'm going to go quite fast. Here is the, here's the relationship. Area equals pi r squared. Pi is 3.14 times r squared. And the radius is 1, area is going to be 3.14. This is 25, so 5, 10, 15, 20. As you can see, 5 is here, 3 is going to be way down here, 3 is going to be way down here, and 1, right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, that's your radius. There, there you go. When the radius is 2, when the radius is 2, 2 squared is 4, 4 times 3 is going to be about 12 something. As a matter of fact, I can talk very quickly turn to the yesterday's notes, 12.56, so it's around 12. That's the best we can do here because this is 5, this is 10, this is 15, so 12 is going to be somewhere here. When it's 3, when, when the radius is 3, it's 3.14 times 3 squared, which is the same as 3.14. I don't like it when the things won't line up properly which is the same as 3.14 times 9. 3 9s are 27, so it's going to be around 28. 
So 3 and 28, this is 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, this is going to be 28 somewhere around here. And then finally, when we have 4, this 3.14 times 16, 16, 4 is a, 16, 3 is a 48, so it's going to be around 50. This is from yesterday, you understand? Uh, this is what we did yesterday. And, and then finally, when we have 5, 3.14, just do it right here, continue right here. When we plug in the radius of 5, we end up with 3.14 times 5 squared, which is same as 3.14 times 25. And 25 times 3, we know it's 75, but it's not 25 times 3, it's 25 times 3.14. It's going to be around 78, approximately 78. We did that yesterday, as I told you, told you before. There is a 75, so it's going to be a little bit above that. These five points that we see here, these five points that we see here, even though there are only five points, it is still what is known as a scatter plot. Scatter plot simply means how are the points scattered on the uh, on the two axes. When we take the coordinates of x and y, x coordinate and y coordinate of a given point, if we plot these points with this x coordinate y coordinate corresponding uh, how are they scattered on, on, on that graph this is how they are scattered it says every scatter plot is an example of covariance here def there is a definite covariance here as you can see covariance simply means they vary together and they vary together not only there is a, they vary together but this happens to be positive covariance as radius goes up so does the area this is one example of covariance now with a different color let's plot let's plot some other points Let's do it with the blue marker here. So here we go. Are you ready? It just so happens that when x takes the... So now we're talking about something entirely different. But instead of talking in radius and the area, I'm just going to speak in terms of x and y. When x is equal to 1, y happens to be 3. So if the starting point is the same. It's the same point as this one. When x is 2, y happens to be... Whatever that is, 40. When x is 3, y happens to be 0. When x is 4, y happens to be, I don't know, uh, let's just say way up here, whatever that happens to be. When it's 5, when it's 5, it's, uh, I'm just making it up, you understand? Let's just say it's 15. When it's 1.5 is this value. When it's 2.5 is that value. When it's this and a half, this much, it is, it is that value over there. When it's 4.5, it's down here. This is, this is a scatter plot. This is a scatter plot here. There is one point, second point, third point, fourth point, fifth point, sixth point, seventh point, eighth point. You see how these points are scattered? But there seems to be no rhythm or rhyme to it. There seems to be no rhythm or rhyme to it. They are scatter plot, but a scatter plot is not an example, is, is not an example of a covariance. Scatter plot is just a scatter plot. It just tells you how points are scattered. Now instead of doing them so nicely, let me do it freehand. Let's do it here freehand so that you understand what, what scatter plot means here. Right here, here's your x value, there are your y values, there are your y values, there we go. There is one value, there's another value, another value. There is no pattern here. There is no pattern here. They just scatter all over the place. It's every, it says every scatter plot is an example of covariance. That is nonsense. Every scatter plot is not an example of covariance. Because if there were, if there were, if they if they were varying together, we would have seen a quite we would have seen a very very a very obvious pattern, either an upward sloping pattern or a downward sloping pattern. Here's an example of an upward sloping pattern. Watch. Now we can join a line here, you can see there, there, there's a scatter plot. There's a, there's a positive covariance. This is the positive covariance. Or we can have something like this. There is a, that's a negative covariance. But every scatter plot is not an example of covariance. Scatter plot is just a scatter plot. 
What does answer choice B say? Answer choice B says, the more I study, the higher grade I get. He says, the more I study, the higher grade I get. He says this is an example this is an example of positive covariance. This is an example of positive covariance and that is true. That is true. If we were to measure on our axis, before we do that, you tell me which of these two variables should go in x-axis and which one should go on y-axis. Which variable depends on what? Does my do my grades depend on how much I study or how much I study depends on my grade? Of course not. What grade I get, what grade I get depends on how much I study. My grades depends. The grades are the dependent variable. The GPA should go here, GPA, in which we can measure in terms of with the letter G. We're going to measure it, variable G. And here, see how much time I study, how many hours I study, how many hours I study a week, how, much, how many hours I study a month, whatever you want to call it, that's your time. And it says the more I study, the higher the grade I get. When I study just a little bit, the grades are very low. When I study more, my grades go up. When I study even more, the grades are going even higher. When I study even more, the grades go up. This is an example of positive covariance. But of course, in reality, the shape would not be like this. I'll tell you what the shape is going to look like. I'll tell you what the shape is going to look like in real life. If you were to plot this thing, the shape would look something like this. Okay, watch what happens. It looks something, it looks something like this. Now, do you know what this is? This, this right here, assuming there is an upper limit of 4.0. Assuming there is an upper limit, which, which there is in most cases. So, in the beginning, the grade rise very quickly. It's very easy to increase your grade from a D to a C or from F to a D. It's much more difficult to increase your grade from C to a B and it's much harder, harder yet, to increase your grade from B to an A. So eventually it flattens out. It, it's, it's still increasing but at a much lower rate than it is in the beginning. And it's going to reach an upper ceiling of 4. That, that's, that's it. But there is, in this example here, there is a positive covariance. They move together, and the more I study, the higher grade I get. As this, as one variable goes up, so does the other one. That is statement is correct. Answer choice B is correct. Let's look at statement C. Statement C says, practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. Here we are told that this is an example of direct variation. Direct variation is another way of saying, direct variation is another way of saying positive covariance. Positive co, not to spell variance, positive co Variance. They vary together and they move in the same direction. The more I study, the better grade I get. Here it says practice makes perfect, which is another way of saying this statement is another way of saying, the other way of saying, the more I practice, the better I get. So if somebody is measuring your performance numerically, that is, they're grading you numerically, whatever it is, whether you're playing violin or whether you're playing soccer or whatever it is that you're playing, and somebody is numerically somehow keeping track of your performance. They have some system of numerically taking care of uh, measuring your performance. And what you find is that the more I practice, again, they're keeping track of the number of hours that I'm practicing every week, the more I practice, the better I get, which is another way of saying practice makes perfect. It's an example of positive covariance. It's an example of a direct variation. That is true. 
This statement is also true. This statement B was also true. Let's look at the last statement. Last statement says the faster I go, the faster I go, the more behind I get. The more behind I get. The, the faster I go, the more behind I get. We are told this is an example of is an example of direct variation. Our job is now to, our job is now to establish whether this is true. And the answer here of course this is not true. This is not an example of direct variation. This is an inverse inverse variation. Indirect variation. This is known as negative covariance. Negative covariance, that's what I'm trying to say here, variance. Negative covariance. Why? Because it says these, these, these are inversely related. Why inversely related? Because it says the faster I go, the more far more behind I seem to get. Which makes no sense, but that's what they're saying here. Uh, that's true, the faster you go, the more, more behind you fall, more, more you fall behind. Though that's an inverse relationship. Because they, they, they are going in the opposite direction. This is an inverse relationship, this is a negative covariance, this is not an example of direct variation. That was the end of it. Tomorrow, on day number 146, I don't know how many days we're going to spend on it, I don't know how many videos I'll make on it, but starting from tomorrow, we'll do the basic concept of geometry. I would like you to turn to page number 92 for a second so you know what I'm talking about. On page 92 and 93, there are some basic formulas that are given to you of geometry and they expect you to know all of these by heart for the exam. They will, you will not be given a sheet of formulas, you will have to know these by heart. We're going to work on those, we're going to make sure that we know these things, these, variable, uh, these, these formulas by heart before you sit down for the exam. It might take uh, two, two, two or three videos, it might take five videos, I do not know until I sit down and make my notes. Do you understand? But that's what we're going to do starting from tomorrow, we're going to learn elementary geometry, basic geometry. Do you understand? If you're interested in learning basic math in general, as I told you before, just type in, watch this series, basic math, day 1 through 100. The series contains 100 videos, as I told you before, you don't have to watch all 100 of them, at least watch the first 20 videos. And master all the concepts that we talk about in those 20 videos in the basic math series. Okay? If you're looking for a private tutor, one-to-one -one tutoring, there is the information here, my phone number, my email address. It's online. I provide online one-to-one -one private tutoring. You can get hold of me. Okay? Bye now.